we have a letter from Danny Dillard who kind of runs the um, collection of what do you call it? Salvation Army, I'm sorry. <laughs> Salvation Army, uh, ringing the bell at the Walmart. And their goal of this year for the area was $250,000. They received $269,000. Uh, at our door, we received almost $10,000, which was the second largest of six Walmarts in the area. And he just taking our church, and I thank everybody who helped and gave for that. Thank you. Mark? Um, can I ask all members of the property? Just a reminder of the congregational meeting that has been called by a session next Sunday at the following worship. Very important. Very important. Yes. <laughs> um, in your bulletin, there is a, um, a notice for the Valentine's dinner. There is a sign up, a bright pink sign up sheet out in the hall. There are four choices um, salmon, rosemary, chicken, lasagna, and steak. Please put your name and what entree you would like, so I have to let them know ahead of time. And that will be on the 15th at Tuscan Grill at 6.30. Thank you. Marco, did you have an yeah. Just a reminder, I was just a little bit that we will be having the Super Bowl on February the 5th at the UPT Garden. And our youth group is sponsoring it. We're going to decide which uh, charity they're going to be donating the funds to. But we will meet people. I'm sorry, you're not signing up. I have it. It's a call. The thing. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll have lots of soup and desserts, and uh, salads and bread will also be provided. So, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing all of you then.
welcome. Listen to these words from Psalms 29, verses 1 through 2. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Would you join me now in ascribing to the Lord by reading responsibly the call to worship in your bulletin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in God's temple.
Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who honor my name. When they call my name, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will receive them and honor them. I'm sorry, I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Forgiveness is ours in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
Thou hast multiplied the nation. Thou hast increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. May God have blessings to this reading of his holy word. Our second reading comes from Matthew. Jesus has been um, beginning at, at the very beginning of his ministry, and he's about ready to do some recruiting of his inner circle of supporters and um, followers. So listen now for God's holy word. If I can find it. Oh, here. <coughs> From the time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. They were in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and Jesus called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> For about a year and a half, Richard and I lived with a 10-inch television that was in our bedroom, and that's the only TV that we had. And we finally scraped up enough pennies to be able to splurge on a big TV that went over the fireplace. And while I love the TV, what I really like even more are the headphones that we bought to go with it because Richard can wear the headphones and I can mute the television. You see, he loves news shows. He would watch them 24-7 if he didn't have to sleep and eat and do a few other things. I won't say he's addicted, but he really enjoys the news shows. Me? I can't stand them. Even if they're not contentious, um, I still don't like it when people talk over each other and interrupt each other and try to make their point that isn't always accurate or respectful or honest. And this year has been, as you know all too well, a very contentious year. There's been very little actual news in Nancy's humble opinion, regardless of what station you listen to. The format simply seems to be who can talk the loudest and who can interrupt the most. I find it very difficult to see hope or joy or peace in any of that. Now, I'm all for free speech, absolutely, without question, but not at the expense of respect. I'm not criticizing one party or the other, one side or the other. I'm simply saddened by the conflict and contention that has been going on, and it makes me feel like this day is, that this country is a rather dreary, drippy, dark <laughs> place to be. Well, Isaiah wrote of such times as well. Time and again, the Israelites lived under the rule of a harsh government. The Egyptians first, then the Babylonians and the Assyrians, and later in the New Testament times, the Romans had their thumb very, very tightly down on the Jews. For years and years, they longed for the promised one who would free them from this governmental tyranny and abuse. 
They, you see, expected a savior who would be a soldier, a warrior, to lead them to overthrow whoever their oppressor was. And that person didn't come and didn't come and didn't come. And in the midst of their time of exile and captivity, the prophet Isaiah writes a word of hope as if it has already happened. That is amazing hope and foresight. He writes, people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. At the time of the writing, this prophecy was not yet fulfilled. Today, of course, it has been. The light has come, not as a warrior savior, but as a child a baby in a manger, Jesus the Christ, whose birth we just recently celebrated. Isaiah goes on to say, for, and it, again, as if it has already happened at a time thousands of years before, for a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We who walk in great darkness have seen a great light. In these difficult and tumultuous days, we need to keep our eyes on that light, on Christ. This divided nation may not be the only darkness that is a part of your life. Maybe you're experiencing health issues, as I recently did, or you're having struggles in your marriage. Maybe some conflict with your children or grandchildren, or a falling out with a dear friend, or dispute with a neighbor. Maybe your finances just don't go as far as they used to and you're worried about making ends meet. Maybe you're facing challenges at work or at school or where you volunteer. Maybe you're having struggles with your own faith or dealing with the loss of a loved one, whether recently or many years ago. Some of you may have felt that this time of transition between pastors has been a time of darkness. It certainly takes, in our Presbyterian system, a, a lot of time. And we just have to wait on the Lord to do the work. And the exciting thing is that next week, your question of when, oh Lord, when, will be answered. You will be voting on the candidate that the search committee will be recommending. And I am excited to be a part of leading that congregational meeting. As with any leader, the, there will be qualities about this person that you will like a lot. And there may be one or two qualities that you're not so keen on. This new minister, you must remember, is not Christ. He's human, or she is. He has clay feet, and a human nature that can fall into sin as easily as the rest of us, just like you. One of the jobs you have is to be mightily in prayer for this person. It's the most powerful thing you can do to support their ministry. And just like Peter, Andrew, James, and John, this individual was called into ministry by God and given gifts and experience and wisdom to bring to the ministry here. And what a wonderful place to come. You are a vital, vibrant church that has so much to offer. And I'm looking forward to your continuing to do the wonderful ministry that you've been doing. The key is that this individual and you will serve together under Christ. 
for the authority has been given to Christ. So any concerns that you have, lift them up in prayer. Be in prayer for this person that their sermons will be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Pray for them to have wisdom in managing their schedule and their energy to balance the various needs of this congregation. And continue to be in prayer for your session, for this is not the time for the session to step back, but to continue to step forward, each and every one of you. For God calls all of us, just as Jesus called the first disciples. God is the one that we're to turn to in times of darkness. Because God is our word of hope. His name is Wonderful Counselor. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in counseling. I have, and I found it helpful to have a place to go to dump all those concerns and have somebody really listen to me and ask good questions and make some suggestions without directly telling me what to do. Christ is our counselor. Go to him when life is confusing and uncertain and be open to the answers that God gives you and the guidance and direction and peace that is at hand. <clears throat> Jesus is also called mighty God, sovereign over all, Lord of all, as it was sung to us so beautifully this morning. No one else equals God. There's one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is in charge. And this church, along with every other congregation, and all of God's people are in God's hands. We live in a world that has already been redeemed. Soon we will enter a time of Lent and then Easter, when we celebrate the fact that Christ took our sins to the cross, overcame them in the power of the Holy Spirit by rising from the grave, and intercedes on our behalf forever, for all eternity. And yet we live in a world that has not yet been fully redeemed. Someday Christ will return and gather God's whole uh, creation back to God's self. And in the meantime, there are dark days. There are light days as well. So we live in this both and kind of world. What seems to help me the most when I'm struggling with uh, particularly the darkness is the phrase from scripture, be still and know that I am God. One of the ways I like to pray that statement is to shorten it by one word every time I go through it. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know that. You get the message. By the time I get through the whole thing and end with the word be, I am resting in Christ's presence. It's a very peaceful, helpful, tool that I have found. Jesus is also called Everlasting Father, which when I looked at that again, I thought, wasn't that interesting? I thought he was the son. How can he be the father? And that just goes to show us that while we all have some ideas about the Trinity, we don't fully understand it. But God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all one. Now, you, um, I think what it teaches us most of all is that God is a relational God. That God is in relationship with God's self and with us. Your relationship with your earthly father may have been difficult, abusive, neglectful, or maybe it was precious and supportive and loving. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves you perfectly, with a love beyond anything we can imagine. And God has chosen you and wants you to be in relationship with him. The most comforting name, I think, is the last one of all, 
that Christ is the Prince of Peace. This is where our hope lies, in Christ, in the light that shines in the darkness. We are called to share that light with other people. Whether we're in a grocery store or at the gas pump or on the, the road and somebody gets in our way, whether our children or grandchildren are driving us nuts, whether we're worried about a million things, our focus is to be on that Prince of Peace, to know that we are in God's hands, and we are there now and will be for all eternity. There is nothing more joy-filled, more hopeful, more peaceful than that. Thanks be to God.
worship God not only with our voices and our hearts, but with the very gifts that God has poured out upon us. So let us now return to God a portion of that which we have received. <clears throat> both 
on a local level, state, and national level. Lord, we also pray for leaders from other countries as well, for they have the same needs and challenges. Some worship you as we do, others do not. And this world needs to hear the good news of your joy and peace. So help us to be proclaimers that the light has come around the world, as well as here at home. Continue to pour out your blessings on the leadership of this congregation. Lord, I give you thanks for the work of the search committee and for the individual in whose life you have been at work, preparing them to come to this congregation to be a part of the ministry of your church called Alta Vista. May it be rich in blessings and joy and ministry to those who need you in their lives. We give you thanks for all the ways in which you bless us, even when times are difficult. And you give us hope through a card or a smile or a hug or a handshake. And we thank you for the ways in which you are present in our lives. Lord, you know that there are joys and concerns of those who are deeply loved by this congregation. We lift up Dean and Ted all the hospice patients and their caregivers, David Etheridge, and we particularly give you thanks that his healing progresses, Kim Steinhorst's daughter, Ted's health, Julie Dalton Dalbright, Linda and Craig, David, all of our members who are homebound or having difficulty getting out and about, the needs that we have and the longings that are on our hearts for those we know and love, whom we lift today in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear us as your people, as we lift together our voices in prayer to you, as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
You are a child of the light, a people of the light. Go from this place and share that peace and joy and hope that only Christ can give. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.